okay so yeah sorry for the delay yeah and now uh, in we were in mbp3 session right so i don't think there is a mission in my video i think uh, so now you must have been very much aware about the publishing processes uh, right production processes and all um, now we will um, focus on after production processes what are the processes that are followed after production um, after production because uh, production is considered to be completed when the final proofs are ready for the book and the books have been uh, the manuscript final manuscript proofs have been sent to the printer uh, it may be in house it may be uh, uh, the outsource vendor generally it is an outsource vendor only right so a uh, publisher has their to Uh, two three outsource uh, printers uh, with them according to their requirements uh, publisher requirements that uh, how many uh, how much load is there and how much workload is there according to that they hire uh, they have contracts with few printers and to them according to their uh, cap um, according to the cap ability of the printer according to the technologies they are following and the requirements uh, the publisher has they send the books to uh, that printer uh, in a production unit uh, of a publishing house there is uh, also one or two personals are there who take care just of the printing things uh, right because an editor doesn't send a book uh, a manuscript to a printer all right so they have a printing person personal with them maybe one two three or maybe is uh, a team also right so when the production is completed the final proofs are ready they are sent to those printing personnel they do their checks at, at their own end uh, they do evaluate the final proofs according to the uh, printing aspects that i told earlier also uh, they run few pre flight checks and all and once they are okay with the proofs that yes they are good for printing they send them to the printers so there are uh many printing processes that are being followed to, right uh different uh, printers uh, follow different processes and uh, different uh, pr they are uh, they, the processes depend on the requirement of the publisher and uh, how upgraded is the uh, printer <clears throat> in terms of the technology right so <clears throat> there are variety of uh, technologies that are used to print not only books magazines newspapers uh, <clears throat> on stationery also we uh, see the printing posters different kind of packaging different kind of print product because everything that is being packaged uh, has some printing uh, printed material on that so different pr procedures and different processes are followed for each printing right so there are Mm, main industrial printing uh, there are many different types of printing but uh, the main ones that are being followed uh, these are offset lithography printing flexography printing uh, digital printing graver printing and uh, screen printing these are the main ones that are being followed in the industry right and these are the main but to for the specific uh, some specific applications different printing techniques are also being uh, developed uh, like uh, you may have heard or you may have read about the thermography letter press printing i'll come to these uh, in detail right the uh, the main processes are there and in addition to that according to the emerging uh, requirements according to the emerging specific application different techniques are also being uh develop in the uh printing domain okay right. so uh no uh, yeah uh we will take one by one uh, different kinds of printing right uh, the main ones first and uh, the specific ones later right so as i uh, also mentioned earlier because uh, you know mbp3 now the remaining units are uh, basically the uh, there is not much to make you understand uh, there are more more, more to uh, memorize the things or uh, so if you 
these are the i would say from the exam points of view uh, this is the this is a very good uh, Uh, these are very good units in MVP three because there are many things to learn and uh, just write it down on the uh, exams like different kinds of uh, printing, different kinds of paper, different kinds of binding are there. So from the exam point of view, MVP three is the best one uh, till now in among uh, one, two, and three. Right. So first is uh, offset lithography uh, printing. Uh, this is uh, mainly used in plates. Actually, the printing is mostly done on the uh, in the plate system, right? So, on one plate there are uh, forms. Uh, uh, so, different printing machines have different models. Some plates follow four form model. Some uh, machines follow sixteen form model, right? So the uh here uh, what is the role of editor here in a publishing house they should know that what is the model that mm, specific publishing house that they are working in uh, what model they are following uh four form model or 16 form model because uh, it is required uh, when a production editor is finalizing the proofs from their end right because of this is uh, this is the production editor who gives the final approval Yes, this this is the uh, these are the final books and they are good for printing, right? So uh, suppose the book pages, uh, the content of the book uh, book is coming till page number three eighty nine, right? So uh, and the um, production editor knows that the publisher follows four form model, right? So four form models means the total number of pages should be divisible by four. So that uh, when the book will be printed finally, the uh, ac uh, the actual number of uh, pages can be printed uh, can be placed on those forms, and then the uh, one plate can go inside the machine, and the uh, one form gets printed. That means four pages in one go will be printed, right? So if the book pages uh, are coming to three eighty nine, suppose. Uh, and they know production editor knows that it follows the four form model, so it should be divisible by four. So the three eighty nine is not a valid uh, page count for the book. What can we do here? We can add one page, one blank page at the end, uh, or two blank page at the end. Uh, sorry, three eighty nine will not be the for divisible the three pages will be added there blank pages will be added and uh, the book page count will be the final book page count will be divisible by four uh, and generally uh, in cases uh, when we have to add three pages uh, to the uh, three blank pages at the end of the book so generally we avoid that and try to reduce one page somewhere wherever we can in the whole book if we can reduce the one page so that three blank pages uh, can uh, uh, should not be uh, will not be added there so we try to reduce one or two uh, uh, is still bad, uh, still okay but three pages uh, generally the editor avoids or the publisher avoids to add at the end because it also uh, looks odd uh, at the end three pages are going blank so if that if that is the case uh, in the whole book we try to avoid this case but if it is uh, completely unavoidable then yes three pages are also added at the end right so uh, yeah uh, in of we were at the offset uh, lithography printing so these uh, this is a printing plate on which that uh, as i have told you right? it is uh, made of uh, aluminium right and this plate contains the image of the content right the content that is to be printed that plate contains that image of the content right and when the plate is inked only this image part holds ink right this be uh, the content that needs to be printed only that plate will hold the ink and then this uh, inked image subsequently get transferred to the from the plate to the uh printing surface right so why it is called offset lithography printing uh, offset printing because uh, the process of transferring uh, inked image to from the plate to the uh, printing surface 
this process of transferring is called offset. Right? So if we say the inked image is uh, transferred to, from the plate to the uh, printing surface, or we can say uh, that the inked image is offset from the uh, plate to the uh, in between plate and uh, printing surface, there is also a blanket type surface that, that is of uh, uh, rubber. So basically from the plate to that rubber blanket and then to the printing surface. Right? And uh, this process offset printing, offset printing can be used to print uh, paper, obviously, uh, the cardboards. It can print on plastic material also. It, it, it is a number of uh, materials that the on which the offset printing can be used but uh, there is a limitation here that that surface uh, whatever is the surface plastic or uh, cardboard that should be a flat one that should not be the zigzag one or some shapes there that should be the flat surface right so there are uh, this is a machine that uh, if you will see the actual the machine it is a plate uh, plate and then the uh, towers like uh, plates are towers like structures are there on which the plates are uh, fixed right and this is mainly used for the uh, high volume work like uh, if the publisher is uh, and this is a very common uh, model that is being followed today right uh, you keep basically uh, in book uh, with the book publishers uh, mainly the two models are mainly being followed uh, nowadays uh, one is offset printing and one is uh, that uh, digital printing right so for the high volume of work uh, the publishers follow uh, that uh, uh, offset printing high volume can be uh, 1100 books in one go uh, 2100 books in one go this is called the high volume and uh, 300, 400, 500 books, uh, this will be the considered as the lesser volume uh, project. Right. So this is the offset printing. Uh, then uh, comes the uh, flexo printing. Uh, it is also called flexography. Uh, right. So it is also done using a printing plate. But the difference between the offset and flexo is that uh, offset uh the that plate is made from aluminium and here that plate is made from rubber right uh it can also print on uh, different materials uh, like plastic metal cellophane different kinds of materials uh, but this is not ma mainly used for books right but you are doing the book uh, course but uh, Certain things will come uh, that will not be related to books. Like flexo printing is mainly used for the packaging uh, packaging items uh, on the like cardboard print, cardboard uh, printing, and all on the box printings, right? Uh, sometimes, uh, not very often, but sometimes it is also useful for uh, uh, newspapers. So flexo is not related much to books. Uh, offset was related to books, and digital is related to books. Uh, digital printing uh, is uh, mainly being used for the uh, less volume, uh, less volume projects. Right. So uh, they, there are also uh, different ways of uh, of uh, sorry digital printing. Just a second, my video is on. I don't know why it is not appearing. Maybe there is a bandwidth problem today. Um, okay. uh, different technologies are there in uh, digital printing also. and But there are two main technologies that are dominating the industry, publishing industry these days. Uh, one is inkjet and one is xerography printing. Right. So here the uh, in digital printing, the plates are not used. Right. Uh, here, what is ha what happens that uh, the image that needs to be printed, image means content image here, right? Uh, that image needs to be printed is created by small droplets of ink, right? Uh, that are uh, ejected from or propelled from the nozzles of one or more print heads. So it is mainly used uh, as a uh, sprinkler. Uh, it is mainly as a sprinkler job. Right, and uh, they can also print on uh, different 
uh, and there's a wide, wide range of materials on which the inkjet printings are used. Uh, paper will uh, paper is uh, common in all. Uh, paper printing is common in all. Like they can print on plastics. They can print on uh, canvas. They can print on your doors also. And on the tiles, uh, when there are nowadays we see tiles, floor tiles also have a printed on them. Uh, sometimes some images there, sometimes something written is there. So for those tile printings, mainly inkjet printing is used, and for posters and all uh, also. And for books, yes, the small run of books. Uh, run of books is the uh, run of books means the number of books to be printed in uh, at a one time. That is called run or also the print run. Okay. Uh, zero graphic printers, they are similar to the laser printers. Right? So they are, uh, this printing is used, uh, is done mainly using uh, a cylinder, drum, electric, uh, electrically uh, the printing is done here. Right. So there is a charger, there is a uh, short drum there. So these are all uh, mechanical uh, things basically. Right. So um, and if you are uh, working in book publishing company, right, and uh, you see that the print run is uh, uh, less, about uh, 300, 200. Uh, this so you can uh, go for the digital printing right and with this uh, the publish uh, because of this techno availability of this technology uh, the publishers are also going for the uh, pod model uh, that is called print on demand model right because uh, it happens sometimes uh, that uh, many a times in fact uh, that the uh, publisher has printed 1100 copies uh, with the print run, uh, with the print run of 1100, and uh, the salesperson or the publisher is not able to sell those many copies within a given period, right? Be because uh, when a publisher decides to publish a book with a certain print run, uh, they also uh, calculate or they also estimate uh, that in how many years they will be able to sell. Uh, the specific print run so for suppose 1100 copies 1100 books they have scheduled uh, they have estimated that they will be selling uh, these 1100 copies in two years right so if they are able to sell well and good but if they are not able to sell uh, these many copies in the scheduled time so what happened what will happen the books will unused books will be will get piled up in their warehouses right so it leads to depreciation of the books like fixed assets uh, you have heard about uh, depreciation term so depreciation also happens in books right and uh, when a book is placed in a warehouse there is a uh, always some insurance cover is there of that warehouse of of those books Right, so that insurance cost, that uh, warehouse cost, because if the warehouse, if in a warehouse we are placing uh, the unused books, that space will be covered, right? Uh, obviously, the infrastructure will be required to maintain those. They can't be kept in a uh, dirty place, uh, right, or a dark place, because if there will be a demand, they will be uh, sold. So, uh, good maintenance is also required a good packaging is also required so that does uh, do not pile up does not pile up on them also so there are a lot of cost that uh, that are that are included in the uh, if we place the unused books in the warehouses right so as the scenario is changing nowadays uh, the book publishers uh, fear that uh, if we publish these many books, we will not be able to sell. So that's why this is the reason they are moving towards the print on demand model. So what will happen in this? They will uh, keep the books ready with them. And whenever uh, the marketing and sales person will make efforts uh, at their end to sell the books, to create the demand in the market. And whenever there is a demand uh, of 200 books or 300 books or 50 books also, so they will just... Uh, 
they will print uh, then only so that's why it's called print on demand the book is ready just the printing was all in the publishing house needs to tell to the printer that okay uh, print these many books in these many days right so it is also fast so we get four or uh, in four or five days the 300 copies 400 copies right so and then this in this uh, digital printing process uh, there are also uh, sub uh, divisions of uh, different processes uh, you know, for different requirements like uh, we are printing on textiles if we are printing on uh, fabric so because digital printing is as i told has a wide range of uh, materials on which it can be used so dye sublimation is there like right? dye sublimation uh, uh is used generally if we also get uh, uh, some fabric dye it is also used uh, it is also done using heat so in uh, dye sublimation process also we use uh, heat in printing right so heat is used to transfer a dye to the substrate and then these are uh, dye sub printers are used for printing on textiles and other materials then there is a digital thermic printing uh, thermal printing process also uh it, it is uh, mainly used to uh, uh change the colors and all uh, of the uh, uh, special coat uh, these are mainly used for the colors of special coating right uh mainly used for marking serial numbers uh, to add to the products and this is used okay. and there is a thermal ink transfer processing also so there are different kinds of process uh, processes that is being followed under digital printing right but in the for the books yes this is digital printing is being followed and for this mainly we use uh, inkjet printing and zero graphic printing mostly inkjet printing and this is for the short run uh, short print run right uh, then there is a graver printing it is also known as roto graver right uh, in this image uh, does not get transfer it uh, image is engraved so uh, you must have seen the engraving process uh, or engraving engraved uh, materials elements in your life so in this image is engraved on the there is a cylinder actually right so image is engraved on that printing cylinder and that cylinder is uh, inked uh, uh, ink uh, according to the specific requirement of the color right and then they uh, this ink get transferred to the paper and this is uh, the printing is done so basically an engraving process is there in grover thing uh, in grover technology and this is also not used for books this is mainly used for newspapers uh, magazines and packaging kind of things so uh mainly in newspapers it is, this is followed that engraving the image will be engraved and then engraved will be a printing cylinder and the printing cylinder to the paper right then there is a screen printing uh, as its name implies uh, this printing uh, technique or relies on screen so we are seeing here that there are different kinds of uh, elements on which the printing uh, uh, relies uh, first we see saw that the plate is there then cylinders are being used then here we are seeing that screen is being used and uh, the screen uh, which is being used in screen printing it is a woven uh, piece of a fabric right so uh, uh, what happens in this printing that uh, the that piece of fabric uh, woven piece of fabric uh, are coated with the uh, some non permeable material right and the remaining spaces open spaces in can be pushed through the mesh right uh, but the basic advantage of the screen printing is that the surface right surface uh, does not have to be flat like we earlier uh, studied that the surface needs to be flat in the offset printing and all but in this uh, surface if we do not have the flat surface then also the printing can be done right so for non flat surfaces we mainly use the screen printing and this is also used uh, in different uh, kinds of materials like textiles glass 
ceramics uh, wood also the wood printing is done in this screen printing and metal printing is also there and you must have worn uh, so uh, t-shirts uh, right uh, with the printing uh, is done uh, of uh, in sports also in specific companies also uh, where they have uniforms for the for their workers the t-shirts or shirts are printed right so for this uh, printing uh, screen printing is followed so if the company has a requirement of this thing the company will go to the screen printing press and because every printing press does not have uh, every technology right but uh, this screen printing is uh, also being uh, now replaced by the digital printing because digitization is all uh, is in every sphere of our life nowadays so screen printing uh, is also now being replaced by digital one right in digital one uh, there are many kinds like uh, block printing is there uh, flocking is there heat transfer printing is there intaglio printing is there intaglio is mainly used for uh, uh, stamp and our currency the notes uh, that we have in their hand uh, this is uh, they are printed mainly using intaglio printing right uh, then there is a pen uh, pad printing uh, this is also called temp um, tempography right and this is uh, we also use the plate then rural cylinder printing rotary screen printing thermography is there so uh thermography uh, you must have seen uh, a lot of times right it is mainly used for uh, invitation cards wedding invitation cards letter heads business cards in which you know when the uh, uh, on the printed side when the letters are uh, if you just feel the letters they you feel feel them as raised right uh, you you can feel those letters on the printed side of the paper so when uh, you have that printing in your hand that whenever you are uh, able to feel those letters uh, this is called um, thermography and it is mainly used for cards uh, letter heads of the companies business cards wedding invitation cards and all so these are the different printing processes uh, followed in the printing industry right but in the book publishing industry we mainly focus on, focus on uh, two mainly uh, that is offset and digital printing right so this is about the printing and then the composing uh, is there uh, different types of composing we have also discussed about this earlier uh, this is mainly the how the typesetting uh, different technologies of typesetting that are used in a comp uh, in an uh, industry right so hot composing is there cold uh, composing is there but the main uh, one that is being followed nowadays is called the uh, desktop publishing <clears throat> it is the most advanced one and it is a lot of advantages over them Uh, earlier technologies so <clears throat> if we see at the history uh, uh, you know that the metal was uh, uh, produced from a metal type then manually also type casting machines were there right but now this is not the case this is not the scenario now we have the machines we have the different softwares with us which do composing for us composing or typesetting for us right composing uh, you can say that the composing is uh, in combination or the process of combination or uh, combining uh, different parts or elements to form a complete unit to form a complete book uh, if you're talking about book only okay. so for the typesetters as i earlier also told the publishing houses mainly outsource this part they hire different vendors for them and those vendors do the uh, typesetting job right so a production editor 
needs to be in a constant touch with these type setters right because if they have any queries and all they will go come back to the production editor only so earlier uh, there was uh, hand composing a manual type setting or, or the metal uh, setting was there right but now uh, the different technologies are being used laser uh, is also used laser technology is also used in the composing uh, digital crt method is also used code composing is there computer to plate is there so different kinds of uh, uh, techno technologies are there okay. So, monotype uh, in this, sorry, in the type casting method, that was a, a historical one. Uh, there were four different types uh, monotype, linotype, intertype, and uh, Ludlow casture. So, all these basically have the differences of uh, differences in mainly uh, how many lines, lines can be produced, can be typed uh, at one time and uh, 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 what is the measurement of the font that they can uh, compose so these different processes differ on these factors right okay yeah so these were the historical ones uh, metal printing and uh, this uh, manual uh, manual composing uh, then they were uh, they were replaced by different techniques like cold composing. Cold composing uh, is not does not use any metal for the casting type of printing, right? It is also called cold composing is also called photo type setting, right? So as the earlier the metals were used and uh, gradually the cost of metal uh, started increasing. So at that time this cold composing and all came into picture right. uh, so uh, several methods of composition are used for flat plate direct impression method of printing and these are all the actually the mechanical things uh, right. uh, Yes, so photo uh, this uh, cold composing can be categorized into three main uh, uh, technologies that is photo mechanical, digital CRT method and uh, laser method, right? In photo mechanical method, images are produced by shining of light, right? Uh, through glass of the character on a paper. And there are two main categories of cold type uh, composing also cold type photo mechanical composing also one is electric type letter composing and one is photo type setting system right so there are they are used uh, both use different uh, technologies uh, in like in electric type setter composing uh, the uh, reproduction copy is created by exposing photo sensitive paper right yeah uh, or you can say film also Right, where light formed into shapes or type characters one by one. Uh, that means you can say like a normal uh, photograph, or how a photographer uh, normally process uh, uh, a photo. If you go on a photo studio and how the photographs are processed there, the um, same process is followed in the electric typewriter uh, method. And this is photo type setting. It is a fast method than the electric typewriter. It is inexpensive also, right? But now photo type setting is also not uh, used. It is considered obsolete uh, because uh, these are these have been uh, replaced by uh, with the emergence of computers and uh, with the emergence of desktop publishing. Uh, photo type setting is also not in the picture nowadays. Right. Uh, in this photo type setting, character storage is there, control light source technology is there, characters are positioned 
next adjacent to each other and it al it also has certain uh, advantages with it like the the type is uh, the text that has been composed that is sharper like right? it is uh, easier to acquire accuracy in type size like uh, and also uh, no metal is used so it is also inexpensive right? Uh, then there is a digital cat, uh, CRT method. CRT stands here for the cathode ray method, cathode ray tube method. So CRT is cathode ray tube. Right? Uh, it is a uh, special uh, tube, special vacuum tube, you can say, in which images are produced. Right? So this is uh, uh, mainly used for the videos and all. If you will read this, you will get to know about this. Uh, then there is a laser uh, laser technology, like the in which uh, obviously instead of CRT, that is cathode ray tube, we use the laser. Right, a laser. Uh, as you know, it is a light beam of specific kind. Right. And then the desktop publishing. Uh, the short form that is uh, it is for DTP uh, that is the main uh, technology that is being used by the publishers these days right and it is uh, done on our computers and in desktop publishing we have the different uh, platforms to work uh, like InDesign is there and different kinds of there so what is the uh, main advantage of dtp uh, as it is being used on the done on the computers so it is fast right and um, it can combine uh, i think we have also discussed about this earlier it can combine different types of font in a single page it can combine the text and the graphic things in a single page right uh, and it has the capability that if we already have the book layout with us so like I already told that the sam first the sample layout is created then if we are passing the complete uh, manuscript to typeset so it can follow that earlier created template to completely uh, format the book like uh, so many uh, features are there in InDesign and the different uh, DTP platforms uh, the columns, margins, you can format your page well accordingly, according to their requirements. Uh, page maker is also there. Uh, page maker is mainly uh, beneficial because it can work up to five different views of a page. Right? And it is possible when the two pages are uh, faced side by side, we can work on them simultaneously. Right? So, it is also capable of adjusting the um, text, graphics, different kinds of uh, fonts on which one page. Okay. Uh, then there is a computer to film method. Right? Uh, computer to film, uh, generally it is called CTF. Right? CTF. Uh, in CTF, it is a printing uh, technology here. Uh, in in this, what happened that uh, uh, like earlier we uh, we just read that uh, uh, image is printed to the plate, then on the plate, then it is transferred to paper or film, right? But here, what happens uh, in CFT method? Uh, directly, the printing uh, thing, uh, printing image, directly gets transferred from computer to the film, right? And then that film is burned in a plate. And yes, and this uh, method is used in the offset printing that we have just uh, read. Okay. So as we uh, read that the plate is put on that printing. So this is the process before putting the plate on the machine that the uh, image will uh, directly transfer from computer to the film and then film will uh, film is burnt to a plate 
and then that plate is put to a offset printing press machine and as the technologies are uh, upgrading so day by day uh, new technologies are replacing the old ones so similarly the ctf computer to film replaced uh, sorry a computer to film was replaced by uh, ctp that is computer to play technology that was computer to film that the first from the computer to film then to play and in this we directly uh, you know, process the image from directly from the computer to the plate and then plate that plate is used for the uh, in the machines right so yes so the process gets shortened here uh one step is reduced here so it is obviously faster than the ctp is faster than the cdf that means computer to plate and the computer to fill as i told this all are today all are mechanical things uh there is nothing much to make you understand uh, then there is unit of cast off and costing we have done uh, enough about these uh, page sizes and all i think uh, the my medium uh, royal crown all right so this i have talked about this how the costing is done uh, production costing i'm talking about here all right so cost of and costing we have cover so uh, different kinds of uh, uh, different methods uh, are also following casting like earlier i told you about the page method only uh, that we count the number of pages and according to the pages we calculate the cost of uh, typesetting proofreading and uh, printing uh, but uh, certain other methods are also used mm, different methods are used in different publishing houses so uh, one is page to page method that i told you earlier uh, one is uh, line to line method right uh, so in this uh, instead of counting the pages to be used in the book we count the lines to be used in the book right uh, ajha notice that uh, lines uh, and sentences are different right Uh, two lines can appear. Uh, sorry, two sentences can appear in one line. Right. So line is a uh, extend from uh, one edge, printing edge to another printing edge. Whatever text is coming, that is considered one line. So don't uh, conf get confused between lines and sentences when you are in a publishing industry. Right. So like uh, in the case of. Uh, books on poetry on mathematics right because uh, poetry books are normally uh, if we have normal books uh, our academic books or text books so the text is uh, from one printing corner to another printing corner right but if we are doing a uh, poetry book so poetry is our uh, poems are aligned differently uh, sometimes and they have short sentences there so short sentences uh, short lines there right so we cannot calculate the page uh, for the costing there we will take uh, on the basis of uh, line that how many lines are being used in a uh, book and uh, similarly in the mathematics also because in the mathematics we have different formulas uh, in mathematics obviously we will have different math equations right so a single math equation will not cover the complete printing area printing space on in that specific area so for these books we can use uh, we use the uh, line to line method and then we calculate the cost accordingly and some also follow the word count method one is page then line uh, then there is a word count method also so the average number of pages uh, sorry every number of words per page is counted Right, and then they are multiplied uh, by the total number of pages in a manuscript to get the. It is a basic uh, simple division uh, formula. 
uh, to get the total number of words in a manuscript uh, if we have the uh, number of words on one page and if we have the total number of pages then we can get the total number of words in a manuscript right so it is not like that you will have to uh, count uh, or see you know, page by page it is the average method so there are a few calculations given you can see that so while costing uh, we talked about uh, type setting cost how that is done on uh, calculation and proofreading cost also how that is done and then uh, uh, printing aspects is, uh, are also taken into account right uh, because printing also has some cost with it and nowadays it has a very huge cost uh, with it because nowadays the rates of paper are uh, are on the peak right after this wars and all uh, trade wars tech pass so the rate of papers uh, is on the high these days so the consideration of the printing cost is also very important first uh, we have the uh, measurement uh, because uh, at the time of uh, deciding that the book will be published by the uh, the acquisition and, and all uh, at that time only the gsm of paper is also decided gsm basically is the um, measurement unit you can say of the paper uh, gsm uh, if we go by the definition uh, that is the weight in grams per square meter of the page right so it is basically the weight of the paper because the higher the gsm the higher the weight the higher the gsm and the higher the cost of the paper right? so according to the uh, cost of the paper or according to the mrp that we can decide for the paper uh, we decide on the gsm to be used okay. but normally uh, 60 to 70 gsm or 60 to 75 gsm is a decent gsm to be used in normal academic or textbooks or uh, is a decent page uh, that we can use in our books Hundred, uh, hundred twenty, hundred ten. It is a very good uh, paper, and it is uh, basically used in covers and all, uh, in paperback covers. Obviously, uh, it is used. So, decision of paper, GSM of paper has been taken in the initial stages at the time of acquisition. Right. So, first is the GSM of paper is considered. Uh, and there are different formulas to calculate uh, the gsm right uh, so what is the gsm and how many uh, papers will be required right so according to that uh, that thing uh, uh, because uh, when we are about to send the book to the printer Uh, to the printing uh, suppose in the month of july we are uh, saying that uh, we will send the book to printing uh, it is uh, informed in advance to the printer that we will send this book uh, this has the uh, G, uh, this book will use uh, this gsm of paper and it will have a uh, obviously uh, it is starting on the medium stage or uh, till the stage when we have the complete final proofs we cannot uh, commit on the uh, exact number of the page count so approximate number of page count and gsm of paper is conveyed to the printer so that uh, when we actually send the uh, manuscript to the printer uh, there is no delay and the printer can uh, uh, make uh, can uh, uh, make their arrangements in advance if they don't if they have shortage of, of paper they can purchase paper accordingly that uh, because they know that the book will come in july and they have, will have to have these many papers of this gsm so this information is conveyed uh, in advance to the printer okay. so everything uh, when calculating the paper cost everything is considered uh, its you know length its breadth uh, what is the gram weight of the paper right so everything is considered on that
and book cover um, book paper and uh, cover paper obviously they are different so for both of them the uh, for the text and for the cover different calculations will be done and then they will be combined to get the consolidated printing cost okay. so i have not gone into much detail because uh, earlier we have discussed much enough about the uh, cost of and costing things so no now i hope if you are asked to do the cost of and costing in your publishing house you will not be much surprised that what they are and how they will be done then we are talking about the paper only for some time there is papers are also uh, different kinds of papers are there there is a history related to the uh, evaluation of paper how paper what are the different kinds of paper what uh, how the paper is meet how what are the different sizes of paper right so this is covered in this unit that i am taking to now here and so if you are asked that uh, what is paper so it is uh, we can say that paper is the formation of felted sheet or matted sheet that are mainly used uh, mainly of cellulose fibers right so basically the paper is a uh, basic material you all know that is used for written communication right uh, and uh, paper and paper board provides us different kinds of materials and for hundreds of using wrapping packaging insulating photography a uh, lot of usages are there of paper in our uh, daily life right and this uh, so there is bit history of this paper Uh, that from where the paper has been uh, originated and from where the this term has is derived so basically uh, this paper word has um, uh, is originated from egypt it is not of india it is of egypt and uh, it is it has come from the plant that is called papyrus right Uh, egypt because this plant grows uh, mainly in the nile river in egypt uh, right so from papyrus we got the word paper right and in ancient times uh, the fibrous layers within the stem of this plant papyrus plant right were removed placed side by side and crossed at right angles right and in this way different set of layers got arranged so uh by arranging these different layers we got one sheet right and that sheet was dampened and pressed and and then it was dried right so when it got dry uh, a glue like thing emerged uh, emerged and that can be used as a adhesive uh to cement the layers okay. so obviously complete defibring uh did not occur in the preparation of these sheets that uh we got from the papyrus plant right and this was uh, these sheets were used for printing mainly in the ancient times uh now this method is not followed obviously okay. so uh, there is a process called paper making process that how the paper uh, is processed right so the paper making uh, can be uh, you can say that it can be traced to about uh, ad 105 uh, in china right uh, in china there was one official who created a sheet of paper using mulberry and other bast fibers uh, along with old rags waste right so the art of paper uh, then from china it reached to central asia uh, and then uh, in 793 ad the first paper was made in baghdad right and that was the islamic culture Uh, that uh, age was called the golden age of the islamic culture right that brought paper making to the 
frontiers of Europe, right? And slowly and slowly, this paper making process developed. And around uh, it, uh, 14th century, uh, number of paper mills uh, got started in Europe, uh, particularly in Spain, France, and Germany. I think, right? And when actually the printing was invented that yes the printing can be done on the paper because earlier you know it was done on the metal and all uh, it was also in the 14th century uh, that increased the demand for paper right till now paper mills were, uh, were there uh, and uh, paper was produced but when the it was felt that uh, realized that paper can be used for printing uh, the paper demand got increased yeah. and uh, this was in 14th century only and slowly and slowly the things grew up things evolved and by the 18th century uh, the paper making process normally essentially remained unchanged only uh, right then in 1800 a book was published Right, uh, which uh, launched the uh, development of practical methods for uh, manufacturing paper from wood pulp and other vegetable pulps. And uh, then several major pulping processes were gradually developed according to these uh, processes mentioned in that specific box. And So these developments happened gradually and they mainly went into you know, fibers and fi fiber fragments segment and uh, chemical and wood pulps method were there, right? So cellulose were there. So this is how uh, the paper was ev uh, evolved, paper was developed slowly and slowly. Then, uh, then gradually the machinery was uh, involved for the invention for the manufacturing of the paper. Like, uh, before the manuf uh, this uh, paper machine, it is called the paper machine. Uh, paper was made one sheet at a time. All right. And then that sheet was drained, uh, dried, and it was also limited to some frame sizes we, we did not have uh, every size of uh, paper and, and this paper machine were there but it were not into much existence so with the efforts of different uh, researchers different personals different scientists it came into existence right uh, so there are various resources from which paper is generated like fiber resources are there. So the cell walls of plants contain fibers of cellulose. Of cellulose, this you have already have uh, learned in your science classes and schools, right? Those cell walls of plants contain the fibers or cellulose. Right. Uh, so this cellulose have uh, high strength. They have very high uh, durability. They are readily wetted by water. Right. So that means they are, uh, they can absorb, uh, cellulose can absorb a good amount of water, right? So that means uh, what happens because of that, that even in the wet state, natural cellulose fibers show no loss in strength, right? So because of these qualities, uh, cellulose is considered good for uh, manufacturing paper. So also fibrous and non-fibrous plants are used for make, uh, making paper. Then wood, this we all know. It is a very main source of paper. Okay. So a tree consists of fibers with a minimum of uh, non-fibrous elements. Okay. And uh, like uh, in the world we have different kinds of forest and there are a different number of great number of species 
that but they can be divided into two groups that is uh, coniferous trees that is uh, that provides us mainly soft woods that is called uh, we can also call soft woods uh, soft wood cellulose fibers right and then the hard hardwood fibers are also there so with these cellulose and all rags are used in making paper cotton and linen fibers uh, that are uh, generated or derived from the textile and garment milk cuttings uh, this is on um, these are also used for making paper then obviously waste paper paper board these are recycled to make the papers right uh, they um, other than wood there are also other natural fibers that are uh, used for uh, making paper right because the form and structure of the cells of plants also differs from wood so the non fibrous cells of uh, plants constitute a major proportion of the wood substance right and hard hardwoods also contain a considerable amounts of non fibrous cells so these are the different methods these are the different sources from which the like synthetic fibers are used then there are uh, processes used for preparing pulp of the paper right uh, and there are uh, different methods used for preparing the pulp also one is mechanical method uh, it is also called ground wood pulp one is chemical wood pulp one is semi chemical pulp right? so different techniques are used for um, this uh, like in mechanical uh, the wood is subjected uh, uh, to an action like by pressing the wood against the revolving grindstone or the wood fibers are separated so different technologies are uh, used for these uh, for all these mechanical chemical wood paper uh, in chemical mainly the sulfuric acid uh, is used for softening the wood Hmm. then the chemical uh, semi chemical pulping is there it is mainly uh, similar of the other wood pulping processes the chips are speed, uh, steep they are uh, impregnated with the chemical solutions and all then once the pulp is produced with these methods then the bleaching and washing of the uh, paper is done Uh, to give them the finishing then the paper is formed and paper boards are formed then the machines uh, then the machines come into role and uh, they form the paper sheet of different sizes uh, when we say that we are using the paper of this size this uh, gsm so dif different machines produces the different sizes different gsms uh, different gsms then once the machines have done their work of producing different kinds of paper of different sizes and uh, gsms then the process called finishing and converting is there uh right because uh, the rolls of paper that have been produced by the paper machine uh, they undergo uh, a number of operations before the paper uh, becomes useful to the end user to the consumer and these operations are uh, converting and finishing right in converting also uh, there is uh, wet converting and dry converting right so oh, there are lot of methods that the paper is produced actually so many things are considered in the paper that uh, what is the strength of the paper what is the durability of the paper what are their uh, optical properties right and then there are different kinds of paper that we use 
one is uh, bond paper right uh, bond is uh, has a has a stiffness has a character uh, character of characteristic of stiffness uh, they are used mainly uh, when there is a uh, when there is a material that is being uh, used uh, repeatedly uh, right so in this uh, we use the when a material is like that when we uh, whenever element is being used uh, repeatedly uh, they will be the Uh, they will use the bond paper like for the letter heads right uh, they are used uh, repeatedly so we use bond papers for that and uh, like uh, uh, our currency and insurance policies you have seen that uh, there is a different paper used compared to your books and all right so for the stationery for the advertising pieces for uh, legal documents we mainly use the bond papers right uh, we we have also used uh, we also use this term like na that should i sign on the bond paper you must have used uh, these terms uh, these phrases right so these are mainly used for these legal documents judgments policies and all because they are stiff and they are used for uh, different Uh, for the frequent handling or the frequent uh, usages then the book paper is there uh, book paper is uh, mainly a combinations uh, of chemical wood pulp like so different methods are used for uh, producing a book paper a book paper is used in the books um for books also you must have seen the different kinds of papers uh, right uh, there are also uh, there are lightweight thin papers uh, opaque sheets are there sometimes coated papers are there so all these come under the uh, book paper uh, then there is a uh, one is one kind of paper is bristol paper uh, bristol is uh, refers to the stiff heavy papers and they have the good thickness with them right and they are mainly used for the uh, punch cards used in machines so bristol paper is used in punch, mainly used in punch cards that are used in uh, tabulating sorting machines right then there is a ground wood and newsprint papers that is uh, basically used in the magazines also in the paper bound books in catalogs uh, commercial printing uh, this uh, newsprint papers are used then there is a craft wrapping paper right uh, it is uh, the paper that we see in our paper packs right the paper packs are much in trend these days so the paper that is used in that it is called craft wrapping paper then paper boards are there paper boards you all have seen like right? three types of paper board are there box boards now mm -hmm. uh, box boards are used for products like uh, food trays plates paper boxes right then there is a container boards uh, then there is a paper board uh, paper board are mainly used for uh, building electric uh, electrical press board and all then there are sanitary papers uh, sanitary papers are mainly used for the facial tissues and napkins right so different methods are used for producing different papers right different chemicals are used different methods are used for making different papers so i know today's session is bit boring for you also Uh, there is not much to then the binding now we have talked about the paper how the paper is produced now the binding is done okay. because when you see the book in the market you have all the the book binded with you so there is some history with it there is some 
process is followed for the bindings. Okay. So basically, the book binding is the process of building a book, right? From a stack of paper, or we can say as an ordered stack of paper, right? Because uh, why then ordered uh, why we call it uh, ordered stack of paper? Because firstly, one binds the sheets of papers, right, with the thick needle and thread, and then one can also use uh, loose uh, loose leaves. Loose leaves means loose papers, right? And when all is there, then these stacks, bound stacks of paper, are binded. To get a final book, okay. and the trade of binding books is in <clears throat> can be categorized into two parts. One is stationary binding, right, and the second is letterpress binding. Right, uh, let uh, stationary uh, binding is uh, mainly used for accounting ledgers, blank page books, notebooks, uh, diaries, portfolios. For this, we use the uh, this stationary binding. Like letter press binding uh, is uh, sorry. Letter press uh, printing is mainly used for the uh, books and all. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, everything uh, like uh, from measuring till gluing, all this, all the steps are followed in. Uh, in binding, we will take them one by one. <clears throat> right, so there's a mystery behind this also because earlier the book formats were different. All right, uh, now the book formats are different. Uh, it There is uh, uh, the form that was earlier used for the writing surfaces was called the wax tablets, right? And then at the turn of the first century, a kind of folded notebook uh, that was in the Latin become commonly used for the printing, and it was in the Roman. Uh, uh, it was common throughout the Roman Empire, right? Uh, so the paper uh, the format of the book uh, started from uh, started changing from the uh, Romans. Okay. So <clears throat> gradually the things developed, and from this uh, what I told you, wax tablets. There were uh, the books developed into the codex style uh, book. Right, codex style book is the same as uh, you uh, you have seen the uh, Ramayan and Ma Ramayan Gita. There is one stand, and then we open uh, these kind of books. Uh, and these are called the codex style books. Right. So then the paper has been introduced. Paper I have we have talked about how the paper got uh, <clears throat> introduced. Then there is a, a different kinds of book binding processes were followed uh, earlier also and now also. Uh, these are the Coptic printing uh, binding, Ethiopian binding, uh, then the lock stitch book binding, embroidered binding, paper case binding, case cloth printing, different bindings are used. Right. So nowadays, uh, for books, we mainly use hardcover and the paperback binding. Right. 
so hard cover is like uh, on the cover we have a paper board a cardboard type thing for the paper that is called the hardware and when we have a uh, on the cover also we have a paper only but of the good quality obviously that is called the paper back binding right so uh, the hard back or uh, we also call them can call them hard uh, hard cover hard bound right they are uh, uh, rigid covers they are staged on uh, staged in the spine of the book you know what is the spine now right and if we uh, see from the top of the uh, spine the book can be seen to consist of number of uh, signature pages bound together or number of pages bound together right and if you open a book from the uh, middle uh, right so you can see the binding threads uh, used in the binding so these are the uh, some features uh, that you can see in the hard cover binding and <clears throat> they mainly use the uh, octavo uh, type papers octavo is a uh, paper that is a single sheet that has been folded three times right so basically for the books uh, the books that have the longer uh, long shelf life uh, we use the uh, hard cover uh, binding okay. Right. So there are number of methods of binding the uh, of binding the hard cover books. These are include these include the case binding. Uh, in case uh, in case uh, binding, uh, the the papers are arranged and glued together in a text block, and this text block is then attached to the cover or case. We can see here to the cover, which is made of cardboard. Right. So this is known as a cloth binding. You have. must have seen the cloth binding also so cloth binding is the case binding that we have sorry for the disruption yes so yeah case binding is uh, the cloth binding that you have seen right then is there is a over sewing uh, process in the this hardback uh, binding uh, only this is a very strong method of binding right and it can be uh, done on the books up to 5 inches thick so on the thick books uh, the over sewing is mainly Uh, used because uh, what happens here that small vertical holes are punched right and then the the signatures are sewn together and then they uh, are glued to the cover of the book then there is a uh, sewing through the fold this is also called smith sewing right where the signatures of the book are folded and stitched through the fold only uh, this is also called the gold standard for the binding right because the signatures of the book are folded and the then they are stitched to the fold only right so this is called swing through the fold uh, then there is uh, double fan adhesive bindings uh, where the signatures of loose pages right uh, signatures are uh, run over a roller to apply a thin layer of glue on each page edge right so what happens or uh, Uh, the loose pages are uh, run or uh, run over a ro roller uh, then uh, after that what happens that a thin layer of glue is attached to the each page right and then the two uh, signature pages uh, signatures are perfectly aligned to form a text block uh, text block right and then they are attached to the cloth lining uh, placed along with the spine of the book and then the binding is completed right so that's why uh, because the hardback covers are mainly used for the books that are uh, thick uh, that have the long shelf life 
so that's why these uh, strong methods are used for the binding so that that so that they do not get loose right like case binding case binding over swing uh, double fan uh, adhesive binding is there so right and different kinds of uh, just a second then there is a paper binding uh, in paper binding we have the uh, as i told that we have a cover that is made of specifically of paper so the uh, different papers of the book are uh, stitched together sewn together and then they get glued to the uh, book or uh, to the uh, spine of the cover then uh, there is a specific process that is uh, followed for the binding of uh, the book this is uh, not very technical and this is very similar to the one uh, if you have binded your books in your school life uh, this is similar to the one only hey right? uh, i have used uh, many times i think a signature word here, here so what is signature a signature is a single sheet of paper right a single sheet of paper that is printed on both sides right and which uh, if we fold them if we fold that uh, those pages so it become they become a uh, consecutive leaves or pages right so signature is a uh, this thing because when a sheet is printed on both side right and fold it so it becomes a signature so the process that follows uh, that follows uh, folding gathering uh, tipping collating sewing nipping and pressing then gluing trimming and then finally the uh, rounding and the backing lining right so folding is the folding of paper right so folding is a very uh, important uh, aspect uh, if you visit any printing press uh, you will see that uh, a few people will be you will find few people sitting there and they are engaged only in the uh, the job of folding the paper right the folding uh, happens two ways one is folding of paper only folding to paper and it, one is folding to print right so folding to paper means like generally uh, like normally when we fold one paper uh, from uh, corner to corner that is simple folding right uh, but what happens in that uh, there can be inconsistencies there right because if we are folding just from the corner to corner of paper there can be inconsistencies in uh, those there can be uh, minor irregularities there right so this is uh, this method is not uh, used for the uh, expensive books expensive materials these are mainly used for the uh, materials that are cheap and that are not very uh, important right uh, for the books uh, and all we uh, normally use the printer uh, these uh, all processes happen at the printer hand right so uh, folding to print uh in print uh, in folding to print method uh, exactness of margin is a very important factor right that is taken into account uh in this instead of uh, folding manually uh, you know, instead of folding uh, like normally from one corner to another the printing edges are taken into account and one printing edge uh, one printed edge is against uh, is set against the another printed uh, edge on the paper right so uh, any differences in margins and uh, if there are any differences in margin because now we are measuring against one print edge to the another print edge so sometimes also uh, it happens that uh, some differences in margins uh, are uh, visible so if we encounter any differences in page margins here uh, at this stage so when the book will be trimmed or when the book will be cut according to the size they can be adjusted at the at that time right and that's why this method is also known as uh, folio to folio or the typographical folding because uh, 
we are using the uh, we are also correcting the margins at all we are noticing taking the margins at all also into account here uh, obviously uh, this method is time consuming right to, but it gives very qualitative results uh you cannot find any error any uh, mismanagement in the margins at all it, it gives very good quality results so this is used for the uh, costly publications and the publications that are actually uh, really prestigious for the publisher this method is used folding to print okay. then there is limp folding right uh, so there are three kinds of folding there folding to paper fold to print and uh, limp fold uh, so when more than one sheet is folded together right it is called the limp folding like in uh, uh, in previous two uh, techno methods we were using uh, pay, we were going page by page but when more than one sheet is folded together it is called the limp folding then these uh, once we have sorted out our uh, um, folding then the bundling process is there uh, bundling and smashing process is there because you know when uh, a sheet is fold uh, some air gets trapped into that uh, right so there is some swelling uh, is uh, can be felt in the papers right so what happens uh, these folded forms or this folded uh, sheets are then smashed in a press right to flatten these fold so that uh, after flattening all that uh, air that got trapped in uh, trapped into while by uh, while folding the paper that gets uh, escaped and the paper can be flattened then uh, there are processes of now we have also bundled uh, uh, our paper and smashed our paper now the processes are, are that tipping wrapping and inserting these are three different kinds of uh, methods uh, what is tipping uh, tipping is uh, done basically when the complete book is printed and suddenly uh, a requirement has come from the publisher that one page is needs to be tipped uh, inserted in the book in somewhere in the middle so when that specific page is tipped it happens uh, it happens uh, at the time uh when uh, an editor has sent the book to the printer uh and they have noticed that now they have noticed that there is a uh, there is an error a genuine error and a major error that needs to be corrected before the book gets out in the market that right? not a small grammatical or punctuation error if it is a major error uh, that needs to be corrected at any cost so a correct that correction is made in that single page and that single page uh, gets transferred to the printer and the printer just tipped uh, that page because uh, uh, reprinting the whole book is not a wise decision uh, from the cost perspective and time perspective right so only that single page is tipped into uh, the uh, folded paper or the book so this is called tipping Okay. then is a uh, wrapping like sometimes uh, a book is not printed in the complete sections right uh, a like a four page section is required to be pasted over the rest of pages to complete a section so uh, a wrapping kind of thing happens here so that's why it's called wrapping right and when we uh, enlarge a section section of pages here when we enlarge a section by four or more pages this is called inserting so uh, tipping wrapping and inserting are mainly the process of adding the uh, paper uh, adding the pages uh, to the already the printed uh, book printed uh, pages here right so now all the pages have been printed the corrections whatever the corrections have to be made are done right so we have the uh, pages the printed has been done but we have all the pages scattered all over right so now the uh, process called gathering that happens right so all the printed forms like i told the uh, printing happens in forms on print right so all the printed forms are kept 
all together right and these are arranged uh, uh these are uh, arranged and the, they are kept in sequence of the papers that are being uh, used on the in the book uh, the specific forms are arranged in that and then the complete uh, pages all the pages are gathered they are placed in a specific sequence and according to that sequence they are placed together and this process uh, this step is very important because uh, if there is a, any uh, error uh if there is any mistake in gathering the pages uh, there will be a uh, error in the final sequence of pages in the printed book right and because uh, any error and uh, then the complete binding will have to be uh, redone so all the cost will have to be made at the printers and only publisher will not pay for that right then after uh, gathering uh, the process of collating is there right now the process uh, the now the gathering has been done we have uh, the pages in a in a sequence right now they are merged in a sequence to determine the completeness of the book to be bound that is called collating that means that we are we are merging all the uh, gathered papers together Okay. Uh, so for this to avoid the errors and all uh, some marks and uh, mark like thing are uh, done by the printer to avoid any misses in the pages or to avoid any uh, error in the sequence of the pages okay now we have all the pages collated together now the swing thing will happen uh, of the book so now the swing will be done swing is uh, also done uh, manually uh, also done uh, by machines obviously manual thing is not uh, prevalent these days right um, so machines uh, machines are used to swing the uh, swing the books like like to swing the larger quantities of the the faster machines are used Uh, according to the requirement right uh, the most common uh, ways of machine swing are saw and swing and um, flexible swing uh, in saw and swing uh, there is swing is done by thin cord thin cord and the in a uh, flexible swing there are no shallow saw cuts so these are the mechanical uh, processes that are followed in the machines then there is uh, nipping and pressing of the book so like uh, when we folded the paper the uh, some air got trapped and then we flattened and matched up the paper uh, similarly when we are sewing the paper right at that time also some air gets trapped in the within the pages right so to escape uh, that uh, air to eject that air from the book the processes of nipping and uh, uh, pressing uh, uh, followed right the pro actually uh, nipping is the process of injecting air from the stitch sections right so that the uh, book thickness looks uh, uniform right because if uh, we will not follow this process the uh, somewhere the uh, sections will look uh, thicker somewhere they will look thinner because of the air trapping right if we will uh, eject that air from all the pages from all the sections the book will look uniform uh, and when uh, nipping is done that the uh, some pressing is uh, pressing is done of all the sections so that the book gets flattened and the thickness get consistent across all the across the complete book then uh, pressing is done the stitching is done now the gluing part is done the book is uh, glued then when the book has been glued to the cover to the spine of the cover the trimming thing happens the books are trimmed on the machines along with the three sides on the three side they are trimmed according to the size of the book that needs to be followed 
and at this time uh, if there is any consistency uh, found in the margins of the book and all so that is rectified at the here trimming process then after this uh, once the books are also cut and also trimmed then rounding and uh, backing process uh, is followed <sighs> because uh, when we sweep the sections the thickness of the back right of each section uh, gets increased because of the use of that swing and thread and all so the spine uh, gets a swelling like thing uh, thing and that become thicker on the uh, four edge side right so the purpose of this step rounding is to remove any swelling in the back caused by swing right so the back of the book is first knocked and flat covered with the thin glue right so Uh, before the glue is and before the glue is completely dry, the back is tapped with a wooden or synthetic hammer. Right after this, backing is done with the again with the hammer. So, this process is basically for the uh, uh, reducing the uh, swelling of the um, sections, swelling of the spine, and to make the book look uniform. right and then the process of lining is there uh, lining is sometimes attached to the uh, strengthen of the paper uh, you know when you open a book right and uh, it gets uh, uh, flat and it does not get uh, uh, close again and again uh, right it when you open a book it gets uh, lie flat on uh, on your table so that happens because of the lining process right so this process is done uh, to strengthen the paper or any other material on which printing has been done so that the binding can hold or binding can withstand with the pressure that has been uh, created by the frequent and numeric uh, numerous openings and all because when we have a book we open it some uh, we open it many times we close it many times so uh, this lining process strengthens the paper to the spine of the book to hold that pressure and to keep your book uh, strengthen enough that whenever you open your book it gets uh, lie down flat and not gets closed on its own right then the case making process is there right uh, in the pay, uh, in case making uh, dummy is prepared then the casing materials are there board is cut pasting of end papers right so uh what is right so uh, dummy preparation is uh, done simultaneously when we are uh, following the above processes that we have just discussed swing and all the dummy is uh, process is being done simultaneously right uh, because the dummy of the book provides the details of uh, exact measurements of the spine and other dimensions of the book right so when the book is uh, printed or the uh, once the when we have done the gluing and all right so the case uh, my uh, case uh, tells us the exact measurements of the uh, book then the casing materials are there the most commonly uh, casing materials for, the most commonly most commonly materials, materials that are used that... Uh, are the boards for the cover for the paper and the pulp uh sometimes the book is also uh, books are also sold in cases cardboard cases uh, uh suppose there is a series book and the the book has a the series has a four volumes in it that are not published to be sold individually in the market they will be sell uh, sold in the market as a unit only so what does the publisher do they 
put all the uh, volumes, more volume size volume, in one case, and that uh, and then that complete unit is sold in the market. Right? It is and for the these case things, generally the hardbound cover is uh, used. Right. And now uh, the we have uh, printed our case with the exact measurements of the books and all, right? Because the case will be uh, prepared according to the measurements of the book, right? So that's why the exact measurements are uh, required for preparing the cases also. Now the cases uh, are done, the books are done. Uh, now the and some end papers are uh, pasted uh, uh, at the back. Okay. and papers are the uh, heavy leaves of thicker paper right which are uh, added at the beginning and the other uh, at end of the bound book right uh, connecting the covers to contents right basically uh, if we normally go basically it is the they are the thick sheets you may have seen uh, in the books that the Thick books that are hard bound, if they are being uh, sold in the case set or cardboard boxes, they have uh, one or two thick leaves uh, at the uh, in the front and the, at the end of the book that are attached to the cover. These are to the uh, strengthen the cover of the uh, cover and the uh, strengthen the binding between the cover and the text pages. Right. So these are called the, uh, this is process is called the pasting of end papers. These are also called end leaves, fly leaves, different terms are used for this. Right. Now everything is done. Now the finishing is yet to be done. Now the finishing will be done. Uh, finishing is uh, mainly the decorating the, it is uh, decorating the cover of the paper by uh, gold leaf, by silver leaf. Uh, it is mainly used in the books of uh, which are leather bound books which are cloth bound books right uh, in these you have seen uh, you must have seen the gold printing there the uh, silver printing there so this is the last step of the uh, binding that the if there is any kind this kind of requirement the uh, cover will be finalized So the binding process is also very, you can say it is also a very important and the way the critical part, because this is the last stage when the book is being prepared to go into the market. And they are preparing the final packaging of the product. So any faults, any errors are also not allowed at, uh, in the binding process. And because you see, if uh, there is error in any stage, if there is error in folding of the papers, then there will be a problem. If the collect collating things, uh, collating uh, task has not been done appropriately, then the sequence will go haywire, right? If the swing is not done properly, when the book will go into the reader's hand, it will just get messed up, right? And um, if the gluing method is being used for the cover, uh, pasting the pages uh, to the cover, if that is not good, uh, that is not of good quality, it will also, the book will also be not durable in the market, right? So the quality of glue and all, this is also, uh, these are also very important aspects in the binding. So now everything is done. Uh, the binding is done and all. The book is uh, ready right? to go to the publisher. So the book, uh, the requirement, the required uh, quantity of the book are sent to the company and then the publisher follows there. For the process for binding, different materials are used. Uh, uh, we, use, we do the leather binding, we do the cloth binding. We have the plastic coated paper. We use the papers only, 
uh, right? Uh, like in the paperback uh, binding, we use the papers only. So different papers are uh, different kinds of materials are used for the binding, right? Uh, like uh, boards, when boards are there uh, in hardback covers and uh, uh, if outbound bonding is there or if we are using the cases or boxes, uh, right? So for uh, that also different boards are there, uh, different kinds of boards are used, chip board, straw board, paste sheet board. So this is the thing that different materials are used for the mm, binding. Then there is a unit on the new technologies used in the book production. We have talked enough about these also. I don't think this needs to be repeated. The digital printing and all is there. We have discussed about the benefits of POD model digital printing, right? So this needs not to be repeated. E publishing also we have done. Then in the <clears throat> technologies, uh, on the word also, or Microsoft word I'm talking about here, uh, there are different uh, uh, formatting, uh, options are there and you are i hope you are very much aware of these uh, processes and all right like uh, you must be aware about the different bars uh, used in the menu bar formatting toolbars buttons uh, how you can save the document how you can open the existing document right uh, uh, text is also formatted in the Microsoft Word, like you can change the font style, you can change the font. Uh, paragraph uh, formatting is um, can also be done. Right. So, bullets, numbering, uh, you can give uh, in Word files. Uh, different layout uh, options are there, normal layout, print layout, how a table is created. Basically, this uh, Microsoft Word uh, unit is included here. Right to uh, because uh, if you are moving into a publishing industry and you are into the editing uh, field, so you must be aware of the word functionalities, right? Because while editing, uh, you may need to format the text, like if you want to highlight, uh, sorry, make the text italics, if you uh, want to make the text bold. Uh, if you know how to uh, do that, you can easily do that. While reading the text, you can, uh, there are chances that you are feeling that, no, this text should not run into para, this should be break into list. So if you don't know how to create a list, you cannot do, the, uh, do that. But these are very basic uh, functionalities of a word. There are options for that. We can do one thing for this Microsoft Word, right? Uh, if you are well aware of these things, then that is good. Uh, but if you are not, then uh, you can try uh, uh, on your systems, on your laptops, uh, desktop, anything. You can try to uh, format the text like uh, paragraph alignment or uh, you know, text formatting, bullet, uh, bold items, uh, list formatting, uh, how to give the numbered list or uh, bold list. You can try those at uh, at your end and in the next section uh, you can raise the queries with me. Uh, you can create a table in that picture in that. Uh, if you want then I can show you on my screen just a second. Mm. Just a second, I'm sharing my screen, huh? Uh, next second. Mm -hmm. 
once the screen is visible please let me know like this is uh, what file right so we have different uh, and the copy editing is generally uh, done on the word files nowadays right the, uh, because the authors also provides in the uh, manuscript in the word files there are uh, different tabs here right file home insert draw design these are different tabs uh, with uh, here see if here we can format the uh, our font like if we have select this thing and if we are changing it to calibri see the font has changed we can change its size 14 uh, 18 right and the font has been uh, changed right if we want to format the font into bold we can do that right if we want to make it items we can do that if we want to make uh, underline we can do that so all options are there uh, right. um, now if suppose uh, while reading it I feel that uh, this text should be uh, broken down into list right so I can do that I will press enter here then on the at the end of the sentence I will add enter here uh, then again enter here Right, suppose and this one enter. I want to make uh, these four points as a list, so I will first select them. Right, here uh, we have the list options in the home tab. If you want to make them bullet, we can make them bullet list. Right, uh, uh, if you want to make them numbered, we can. We have that numbered list, so uh, the formatting of list is easy you just need to select the text and you just need to select the format that you want if i select these bullets so these will come here right so formatting of bullets is there so it, uh, list is there it is easy right and the alignment part right so okay and so alignment part uh, this is this presently left align see alignment we can see here this is left, this is center, this is right, and this is justified position. So presently, this is left because left is highlighted. If we want to make it center align, we did now it is center align. If I will select it right, it will right, right align. Right. There is a option of spacing. Uh, this is the spacing between lines. Right. Currently, it is one point. If I will select, see the spacing has increased. So you must be aware of these common functionalities that are used in Word. Right? Uh, generally, uh, bold, items, and uh, list numbering, uh, tables also sometimes uh, you need to create. So there is an insert option. We can go to the table, insert tables. There is option that how many rows I want to select, how many columns I want to uh, have in my table. I can select that. I can enter my text here, right? Uh, anything, and if I want to increase that, uh, we can. I can do that by pressing enter. Also, I can do that by pressing uh, right click and then insert columns to the left, insert rows above, insert rows below. Every option is there, right? So the table properties uh, when you will work on the table. The table property section will get open. You can change the format because, but generally, uh, if you are doing the editing part, you will need not to change the format. You will just have, you will just need to have the table, and uh, the type setter will uh, format the table according to your requirements. Right. So these are some basic uh, functionalities. So, what is there? And then, uh, from the design perspective, there are a uh, few design programs that are uh, followed. Uh, that is uh, mainly they are Corel Raw and Photoshop. 
uh, if you want to excel in those uh, you will have to have uh, separate programs for those uh, these things but these are also used for the uh, for the if these are required if you are if you are going into the designing part graphics part right for designing the cover images and all uh, if you are going into the designing thing uh, you need to have the knowledge of basic knowledge of uh, this coral raw and photoshop right so here we are uh, ending basically the um, the main things are uh, done th those are similar in photoshop or coral raw the methods are different but the main uh, difference between the photoshop or coral raw is uh, that photoshop is uh, mainly used for editing uh, photos and creating graphics right right and coral raw is mainly used for uh, illustrations logos these kind of design works right so according to the requirement you can opt that uh, which one you need to use photoshop or coral raw right but if you are an editor and all so these things do not play much role so we are done with mbp3 uh, mainly mechanical things are there if you have any queries and all we can ask and in the next two sessions we have mbp4 okay so if there are no queries then i think we can close it sir So can we close this? Thank you so much, ma'am. Yeah, you're welcome, Jansh. Varsha. You are Varsha. Okay, but your uh, name that is uh, being displayed is Jansh. Is there? <laughs> My okay, son. Okay, okay. Your My son. name is Varsha Sindhuria. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. You're welcome, Varsha. Then. <laughs> thank you so much ma'am yeah okay then thank you sir thank you everyone great knowledge great thank sharing you, great very nice ma'am so <laughs> thank you thank you varsha uh, because uh, today there was not much to uh, explain or the things or yeah. not much to explain the processes and all uh, like earlier sessions today there were uh, mainly the things to memorize and learn like paper yeah. measurement paper sizes you will uh, it will be better you when you will get your study materials or not uh, for exam perspectives you will have to memorize those things mm -hmm. yes yeah. for me it is entirely you know new i belong to basically a medical section i am a physiotherapist okay, okay. but uh, okay. i am from the research point of view i am doing this because okay. i should know now how to publish the thesis the books of the student yeah so yeah, yeah right 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 okay yeah. okay okay so good luck for, for your uh, endeavors <laughs> thank you so much yeah. thank you okay then we are closing it and we will okay. meet in the next session with uh, mbp4 units sure right? ma'am thank you have a great day yeah thank you okay sir thank you sir so is not here i think okay then we can close okay. it yeah yeah bye, oh, bye. great day ma'am bye bye yeah bye